A little over $11,000 bought me this 2017 Volkswagen Golf R. And as you can see, it's still missing its front end, but hopefully by the end of today's video, we'll be able to put it back together. What if I told you there was a way to get the car of your dreams at a fraction of the price? The only catch is you have to fix it yourself. This is Copart Punagorda, got our vests on. Would you do it or pass up on the opportunity? Well, recently I had that same question asked to me and I said yes. As you can see, I now have a 2017 Volkswagen Golf R. What normally sells for $33,000, I got for only a measly 11K. discounted over 60% than what it's worth. The only thing is I have to fix it myself, which could be an issue since I have literally no experience working on cars. In my last video, I actually made decent progress repairing the car. I was able to put a new fender on and even figure out what's wrong with the headlight. And we got power, baby. We figured it out. But that's only a few reasons as to why this front end is still in pieces. Now, the reason it's still in pieces is because there's still a few more things that kind of need to get replaced. As you can see, there's still a lot of things broken on the front end of this Volkswagen. We do have this like support bar that I do have a replacement for, but the main problem that's preventing us from putting the headlight and the bumper on the car is because of this right here. This, if you can see, is a broken radiator support panel that fortunately I was able to find on eBay for only about a hundred bucks. Now I've noticed in the past couple of videos that I tend to get ahead of myself in thinking how quickly I'll be able to fix something and it actually ends up taking a lot longer. So I just wanna map out the plan for today. First thing we're gonna install is this bracket piece right here, which helps mount the headlight to the fender. This should be the easiest part of today's journey. Once we have that installed, we're gonna move on to what's most likely going to be the longest and hardest part of today's project and that's gonna be installing the radiator support panel, which you can see right here. Now, it was a bit difficult because I didn't wanna buy this from Volkswagen, so I was able to get this aftermarket on eBay. It's not OEM, but it looks identical to what I'm going to be replacing, so fingers crossed, that it's a pretty simple install, and I'll show you more about that in a second. Now, once that's installed in the car, if you watched the last video where we replaced the headlight, or tried to fix the headlight, we kind of diagnosed the problem, I ordered the control module. This is not used, it's brand new, and it's not from Volkswagen, and it's not in, I believe, an official part, uh, which hopefully we'll be able to install. Now, before we get into the install, I managed to get my hands on the damage report that was given on the Volkswagen Golf R from the insurance company, and what I saw was absolutely shocking. As you can see, the body shop quoted over $500 for the radiator support panel and around eight hours worth of labor to install it. And as you know, labor is isn't cheap. What's shocking to me though is the parts price matches what Volkswagen sells it for, but I was able to get this third party on eBay for only $100 with free shipping. Now what's crazier is the headlight repair was quoted over $2,000 from the body shop, which I'm most likely going to be able to fix for less than 600 bucks. No wonder this car was considered a total loss. Unfortunately, it's raining in Florida today, so it makes for a harder video without light, but I do have this portable solar generator that I've been using, and this is able to power these kind of LED lights that I've strung to the garage here, and that's giving me enough light to work on this car. Now, if you wanna pick one of these bad boys up, I do have it linked down in the description, and it's actually really cool. I've also made a video on this before, which you can check out in the description as well. Getting into today's repairs, I'm starting off with the headlight support that gets mounted onto the fender. All I needed to do for this was just tighten down two bolts with, I believe, a 10 millimeter socket, and just like that, I had it installed onto the car. Next, I disconnected the battery, mainly because I had a feeling there was going to be a lot of sensors that needed to get unplugged. Last thing I need to do is pull an impact sensor while the battery is on and do even more damage to the car. Now, before we dive into replacing this radiator support panel, there's quite a lot of stuff that needs to come off of it first. Now, looking at this radiator support panel, it does appear 
that everything looks identical. This is for a Golf. Granted, this is a Golf 2, just the Golf R. Um, it does look identical to the one that I'm replacing. I mean, funny enough, we even have the rivet nuts again, as you can see here. And as we said in the last video, these can be used on metal, which we had to install, but also on plastic. So I find that funny that these are also now on plastic. Fortunately, this comes with the rivet nuts installed, so that is a blessing because I'm seeing quite a lot all over this panel. Now, in regards to working on this, I think we're gonna have to take these bars off first. Then we're gonna have to take the headlight out. Then the bracket's gonna have to come off. We're gonna have to take this off here, so on and so forth. And then we're gonna have to take the uh, front crash bar off. And then I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that this radiator support that goes apparently in front of this piece, maybe it appears like that. If you look at these cool, and if you look at the uh, refrigerant lines here, they look to be in front of the bracket. So we're gonna have to try to remove that too. Each metal bracket has three 30 millimeter Torx heads that I unscrewed with my cordless ratchet. Then it was back to removing the passenger headlight again, which is held down by three more Torx screws and the wiring harness that needs to be unplugged. With both headlights out of the way, I had enough space to then begin working on the broken front support bar, as well as remove the two nuts mounting the locking mechanism for the hood to the crash bar itself. Well, as soon as I took this bolts off, you can see why this thing needs replacing. Look at how loosely this thing should be here. It definitely needs to come off. All right, so I think this is a good time where I also start unplugging sensors and stuff. Now, I see a sensor back here, which I'm gonna unplug in a minute, but I also see one that's attached right under here, this wire, which is some sort of sensor, which I'm also going to try to unplug. There's quite a lot of things that need to get unplugged before I can move forward removing the radiator support. The obvious ones consist of this ambient air temperature sensor, which you just squeeze in the back and it pulls out. Moving on, there were these yellow crash sensor plugs on either side of the car, which involves pulling the red pin down using a screwdriver if it helps, and then pushing in and pulling to disconnect it. This is exactly why I unplugged the battery. Next was the hood latch sensor that needs to be unplugged, and then it was time to unplug both horns and release their harness from the bracket. And the last thing that needs to get unplugged is the radar sensor. All right, so with all these sensors, I believe unplugged and disconnected, I'm gonna start working on taking some stuff off. And I think what I need to take first, I'll start with the easy stuff, is this kind of air box right here that sends the air into the uh, cold air intake. In order to remove the airflow box, I first pulled the coolant hose off from the back of it and then just removed the two screws up top. It just slides out after that. Then it was time to remove all the screws and bolts that connect the front crash bar to the radiator support. Each side has a T30 screw on it. All right, so I'm pretty sure I've disconnected most everything that I need from the radiator support. And I think we should be ready now to start removing this actual crash bar, which is four screws, I think 16 millimeter on each side of the car. With everything disconnected and unscrewed from the crash bar, all that's left is removing four 16 millimeter bolts on either side of the frame. I just realized there are two bolts I left on, one at the bottom here and one on the other side. Check it out, there's a sneaky bolt right there. And I believe the same thing on the other side right there that need to come off. All right, this time, hopefully removing the last two hidden screws, the front crash bar should just pull off. That was easy. That was pretty easy. That was pretty straightforward if you ask me. Put this over here. All right, so I think I'm at a point in taking this apart where I'm gonna wanna start pulling things off of this old bracket that I can remove and start putting it on the new uh, reinforcement bracket here. Uh, I only see a few things, so I wanna do that first and then we'll start taking more of this apart. From what I can tell, there doesn't seem to be much. I need to take this latch off here, which we're gonna do next. And I think I can disconnect it probably here 
thread it into the new one. And then I believe there are these two kind of impact sensors here that I can remove, one on each side. And I think that's it. Maybe disconnect this down here. And then I can start maybe getting these clips out and pulling this off the car and try to install the new one. So before we continue any further with rebuilding the car, I just wanna break down the current build cost. As we left off, we are currently at $15,927.61. We have three parts that we are going to be installing. The radiator guide, which was the small skinny bracket, the radiator support, which is the big square thing, and then the DRL module, which is $61.76. In total, it's really not that bad. $104 for the radiator support, $42 for the radiator guide and the DRL was 61, so about 200 bucks for those three parts. That brings our new total for the build so far to $16,136.30. I started off by transferring over these plastic airflow covers from the old radiator support to the new one. Then it was on to disconnecting the wire that connects the lever inside the car to the hood latch. With that out of the way, I was able to remove and transfer the plate and hood latch by unscrewing and fishing both wires through the holes at the front of the radiator support. Both of these wires were actually held down in place behind the radiator support, so you have to kind of work with it with your hands to get it loose. Then I could transfer the impact sensors on both sides and also unscrew the bottom of the radiator support, which connects to the belly pan. For those wondering what the jack stand is doing on the floor, I use this as a way to hold up the condensers so that they don't hang by their tubes. The last and probably the hardest step was removing these two stubborn yellow clips that hold the intercooler onto the radiator support. I spent a good hour fiddling around with this because each side I got unclipped, the other side would pop back in. So I resorted to using two screwdrivers, pushing them in and then whacking it with a hammer and that seemed to have done the trick. With everything disconnected, I was able to pull the radiator up and away from the rest of the car, and this gave me enough space to slide the broken radiator support out without having to unscrew any of the radiator hoses. Alrighty guys, and there you have it. We have officially taken off the radiator support panel. Um, I just transferred everything over to the new one here. Uh, where is it? Right here. The old one is on the floor there. I'll show you guys a close up of that. But that was pretty simple. I think the most difficult part, literally the most difficult part was two clips. The two yellow clips were borderline impossible to take off. I had to use a hammer and a uh, flathead screwdriver. And then finally I was able to wiggle them out. But Officially, every single thing is off the car that needs to be off, and I was able to even move out the uh, radiator right there, I believe that's what it's called, the radiator, because the lines were made out of rubber, God bless, so nothing needed to be unplugged. Let me show you. All right, so check this out. I was able to move the radiator out of the way, then there's the intercooler and whatever there. This is the radiator, I believe, which has the refrigerant in it, and you can see I was able to just move these lines because they were rubber, right here, these two rubber lines, I was just able to slide this over without actually having to take anything off. I'm plugging it, which is really cool. Uh, here's the broken one, you can see right here, completely snapped right there. And then I transferred, as I was going apart, everything over to the brand new one here. So we should just be able to slap this back on and then start putting every single thing back together. And I think the assembly will be much easier than the disassembly. So with everything taken off the car and everything put back correctly on the radiator support panel, let's start putting it all back together.
right, so we have officially put in the last bolt for the front end of this car, including everything for the headlight as well as the front end radiator support. Now that means it's time to install this dreaded headlight, which you guys remember from the last episode, we found a faulty control module. Well, that part has officially come in, so now I have to install that onto the old head or onto the uh, new headlight that I bought. And then we're gonna put it into the car and fingers crossed that that solves the problem. And then we're really done with the front end of the car. All right, so before we start digging into the headlight, I just wanna show you the new aftermarket control module that I bought. So check it out, it's a brand new third party aftermarket uh, headlight DRL control module, which we're gonna try to install now. Now I marked the bad control module with an X here so I don't get confused when installing the, the new one. So the time has come to install the headlight into the car. The module is in, everything is tightened down. You guys are gonna be the first ones to see my reaction. Um, I'm gonna put it in first. If it starts up and lights up, then I'll tighten it down. But uh, I guess, uh, what am I waiting for? Let's just go put it in. I need to plug the battery back in. Let's do that really quickly. Alrighty, now let's go turn the, uh, the power on. We did it, yes sir, check that out. Lights are on on both, everything is working fine. So that tells you there's no coding needed to put this in as far as I know, as well as you can buy a third party non-OEM uh, control module for the DRL. That is insane, we have working headlights, this is incredible. All right, so with everything finally working correctly, it's time to actually uh, tighten everything back down into place. So I am missing a bolt on the side here and I'm hoping that when we were cleaning up in the uh, episode when we took the bumper off uh, and all the plastic fell on the floor, hopefully I have the screw that goes in the side here to mount this to the, uh, to the, to the headlight. Alrighty, so check it out right here. I'm glad I saved it. I don't know if you can see, but inside there is the missing bolt that is needed to mount the headlight. And this is the sole reason why you do not throw anything out on the car until the build is done. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed the install of the radiator support panel as well as some of the other broken parts and the finally working headlight. I'm so excited that this car is officially coming together. We have a few more things to uh, install on the front end before we get our way into the interior. But with all that being said, guys, definitely make sure to smash the like button if you are liking this content and wanna see more. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. <laughs>